Still an arrogant jerk. Never liked Dunyuk. That whole family, annoying. Guys, it's your girl Aisha, aka Geek XX Chic, and we are back with another reaction to Sweet Home, the final season. We are now on to episode five. So the last episode was a little bit of an emotional one. We see that we have again <laughs> lost Dee Kyung at the hands of her horrible ex-fiance. She went back to the stadium to try to get through to her daughter. She actually did succeed, gave her a name, Isu, and then they were trying to leave, but they were caught, and it just ended badly, unfortunately. So now Isu is definitely anti-dad, but it's a little too late because he's determined to try to get in that body one way or another. On the other side of things, we see that monster Hyun Su is on his way to the stadium after discovering that Sang Won or whatever the name is he had before is at, is at the stadium. He's got beef with his monster. So he wants to go there and basically show that he's not the weakling that he was back in season two. Although I really don't think he was a weakling. But anyway, so he's on his way there. And we also see that Eunyu and the soldier and the crazy girl are also on their way because Eunyu's like, hey, everyone's at the stadium and it's gonna be bad. And finally, we saw Unyuk. Finally, Unyuk has been re revealed. He is a neo-human, but he's a little bit different than the ones we've seen in that basically he's immortal. So every time his body dies, he can go back into a cocoon and re be reborn perfectly healthy. So that's what we learned in the last episode. Again, all roads leading to the stadium. So I'm excited to see where we're gonna go with this episode. So let's jump in. Just before I do though, a reminder that if you'd like to be in the know when I drop these episodes, please go ahead, hit that subscribe button and that notification bell. So you're in the know. All right, that out of the way, let's get into the episode right now. Rude. Shiba! You are a Shiba. Damn, you didn't have to do we kill like that. I really like that actress too. She's so cool. <laughs> That's funny. I love that he's stalking you like a horror movie. He's like, I can fly, FYI. Can you? Can you just kill him this time though? Cause literally at this point, he's just gonna burn you again. <laughs> I feel like he still didn't kill him. He should have. No way, is she about to run into her brother for real? Now does she stay on mission? Can we get a ride, hello? Yo, wave them down, quick! Anyway, we'll see if he just lets her go. Cold-blooded. Oh, we meet again. He owes you. Watch his hands though, they're still acidic, bro. Ew. Do you wanna make out with me or what? I keep telling you, you need to find another form for that, bro. It's so slow. Still an arrogant jerk. Never liked Dunyuk. That whole family, annoying. Bro, this is clearly not working. You could just leave. Right? That part is true. Yep, just like your sister. Yeah, go do with your little hoe. Leave me alone. Ew. Of course, you're not even figure. Actually, he doesn't care. That must be satisfying, even though if it's useless. Go, Kim, Kim, Kim. You're forgetting this man's made out of acid. Yeah. You boys done? Yeah, I think he figured that part out, sis. He's not that slow. <laughs> you called him Opa. I think he got it. 
이제 넌뭘할 건데? 응원 정도? 아무것도 안 하겠다는 개소리에 뻔뻔하기도 하네. Exactly. Like always. Like always. 나갈 수 있겠냐? Exactly. I have to carry your ass. Yeah, I don't know what you expected when you ram that thing into. What do you say? Give her a Sparta kick in its stomach. No stadium or can't get out of. What the hell are you talking about? Um, I've kind of always been a dick. You knew that. No, that was on Gwan Yoo's. Oh no, you're not the center of the universe, sweetie. Someone needs to tell you. Yeah, but he didn't say that he would come back for you to be specific. No, weren't you the one who always reminded him that he wasn't your brother, 혹시 필요한 게 있으면 얘기해. 날 보내줘. Right? How about we give him that? 그건 안 돼. Oh Jesus! Now you're adding addendums. Sis, call your monster friends immediately. All of them. 너를 살려둘 이유를 찾으라는 거였는데. I mean, either way, if you kill me, you're gonna figure it out. 네 몸으로 옮길 때도 비슷하지 않았어. 꼭 내가 죽어야 한다는 말처럼 들리는데. Please. 재진이는. He's bringing his hippity hoppy ass there, sadly. Bleeding all over the place. Sir, hepatitis. Ew. Cry harder. You were such a badass a few hours ago. You just suffer more. Really? Yeah, bro. If he can't take him out, you certainly can't. 자꾸 아직도 차연수가 살아있는 것 같지? 차연수가 쓸만한 놈이란 걸 증명할 때야. Actually, screw you. Yeah, actually, screw you. 내가 기억하는 그 이은영 맞냐고? Clearly not. Actually, he was always kind of a dick. 그때 내가 아니다. 그런 말이 하고 싶은 거야 지금? Not as such. 그냥 내가 싫어졌으면 싫어졌다고 말을 해. Hate would require emotion. 찬스와 달리 넌 쓸모도 없고 원래부터 하는 게 없었잖아. Thank you. 미친 오빠도 아닌데. Someone need to say it. It's like my vision's clear now. Thanks. Thank God, because finding glasses in this world would be virtually impossible. 그래도 재수없게 말하는 건 여전히 일관성 있다 너. Thank, didn't I say that? You're acting like he was different. It's like surprisingly, my vision's great. 괴물이 데려다 만 몸이니까 약좀더 비슷해질 텐데. 그렇게 해서까지 아이 몸으로 옮기는 이유가 뭐야? Yes. 빨리 가서 재워봐요. 매자마자 바로 만져봐. Open who up? The girl? I was gonna say put her legs in there, but I guess you don't really need to. Respectfully, little boy, if you can't pick locks, I don't know how much use you are right now. It's a long, very tra tragic and traumatic story. Yes, one step at a time. You look so suspicious, it's not even funny. Oh, 
I love that he's getting hurt more. Mar! Mar! I mean, they should try. Wow, you have to make it just known to everybody that he's missing? Does he know what's wrong with her? Jesus! No, I feel bad because she's the only one out of that crew that really isn't 100% with them, you know? Aren't you about to... Okay. Yeah, but she can't be alone. What is this problem now? Don't you know? I don't know. I don't Bless their loyal hearts. I don't know. 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 I don't she literally has nothing better to do. Ooh, it heats up! He's like, I didn't even know I could do that my own self, guys. I didn't even know I could do that my own self. <laughs> All right, well, we have a very interesting episode here. Um, a little fillery, but not too bad. I think the main things I took away from this are we see that the body that Sangwon is in is, is taking damage. Like he can't even heal it properly anymore. So it's deteriorating. Thank God to the original host. He really is just saying screw you to this guy and I'm loving every minute of it. But yeah, as we see like his legs jacked up, now his eyes not healing, you see the ear. So he literally has a timer. Like he's probably got another, like, actually I think, I think the body will maintain itself as it is, but if he takes any more serious damage, he's not gonna be able to survive it. Like he's not able to heal anymore. So this is why he's so desperate to body jump now because he knows now if he cannot find a way to jump anymore, he will die in that body. So we see that thankfully Isu was able to push him out. Like he did try to jump into her and she pushed him out. So again, I don't know if that could be a combination of the fact that the body is still holding him captive, but I also do think she pushed back. I don't think she knows how she did it, but that's very helpful because like I said, I do think still that it's gonna become a showdown of her fighting to keep him out and doing her best to like do that. And then probably, I just feel like he's gonna jump her body at some point and it's gonna be a fight for her soul, but we'll see. I'm hoping it doesn't come to that, but I sense it might. But anyways, so we see that the scientist, unsurprisingly, A, because he's an absolute psychopathic sci scientist, but also because he's trying to continue to preserve his life, gave him the key potentially to breaking out of this body, which he said that every time you've ever really body jumped, it's been because the body you were in was in danger of dying. So it wasn't just something you just randomly did. Every time you've done it, he's like, think back, what was the trigger? It was you being either in immeasurable pain that you couldn't take anymore, or you thought you were gonna die. So he's like, I think you need to put yourself back into that mindset to force the jump possibility. So he's saying that he's preparing something, he says he's gonna burn himself. And basically when he gets to the point, obviously when that body can't take any, because remember all monsters are susceptible to fire that we've seen. So even the Neo-humans. So he's like, I'll do that. And then obviously I'll have her nearby and then I should be able to do it. So that's kind of what he's planning. And uh, thankfully that didn't necessarily happen. We see that while Isu got captured, the girl, I don't know what the scientist is doing with the girl. That's the part I'm confused about right now. I don't know what he wants with spider girl, but she was already suffering from something. And I don't, I feel like the scientist knows what's going on or has an idea, I don't know. But he wanted to cut into her stomach, which we've seen she was holding her abdomen the last two episodes and we don't know why. So I think he knows something. What it is, I don't know, but clearly there's a reason he wanted her. So it just, oh, like I said, it just broke my heart to see that he was just rooting around in her abdomen though. Like she's still a person. <laughs> 
Yes, she's a monster, but like I said, out of that group, she's definitely the, the least vile. And I feel like she's only with them because A, she didn't want to be killed and B, because she's scared of them, right? But digressing, uh, we see that our little boy here, what's his name, Yun, Yunsu? Yunsu, I want to say? The little boy, anyways, he figured out where Isu was and he went to her and basically was like, you know, I have to try to get you out of here because if you found your mom, you should go. And she didn't say what happened to her mom because I think she's still sadly processing, but she told him her, na um, her name. And he was like, look, we'll get you out of here. You'll have me, you'll have Miss Cha. Like, we'll be okay. And of course, the, there's a lock on the door and he can't do it. But she said, look, if you help me out of here, I'll give you what you want and I'll make you a monster. So I wasn't sure if she would do it, but I kind of get why she did. Like, I at first I was like, is he really gonna want to go through with it? But he's like, what? I think he's supposed to be like 10 years old in this show. So I, I get it. You know, he's been through so much in the past year. He's lost everybody that he's cared about for the most part. He's getting bullied. He just feels powerless. And it seems like monsters have all the power. So... I get him thinking that, you know what, if this stops me from being the victim, if this stops me from losing anymore, then I'll take it. So again, I don't think he even realized that what she was doing was actually real until it was probably too late, but it worked because whatever it turned him into, he got strong enough to break her out of that cage. Now, whether or not he's gonna be neo-human monster or, or just a regular one, I don't know. All the turning she did, with the exception of the boy. The boy, remember from boy from last season, he exploded. His turn wouldn't take fully and I'm not sure if that was because of her or because of him. So I'm a little worried <laughs> to be perfectly honest because we've never really seen the long-term effects of her turning people. When you think about it, last season, she turned those two guys that were following um, Unyu, but we never got to see like the long-term effects. Like, did they stay that way, right? Although they already did turn though. They did successfully turn. But the one, the boy from last season, you know, the one whose mom turned into a monster and he wanted to take her out because, you know, of all the things, he didn't turn. But when he finally tried to turn, he literally exploded. So I'm, again, I'm not sure. I don't think that was for nothing. Either, like I said, something with her monsterization, turning might be off. Because again, the way she turned her mom didn't go well either because she wasn't fully monster and she wasn't fully human. So anyways, my point is, I don't think it's an exact science. So I'm just worried that maybe there's an ill side effect. And again, I don't know whether or not the little boy is like a full monster or if he's like a neo-human monster. So we know that she can control them once they're in monster state though, at the very least. So she can ensure that he doesn't get hurt for now in the sense of taking unnecessary risks. But anyway, so she's now in the wind, but not really, she's back, no, that's right. Yeah, she's back inside. She went back inside of the shelter and then we didn't see where she went after that. And then I don't know what happened to the boy. He still looks human though, I think. So I'm not sure, as I said, we know she's in there, but she can't have gone far. She's even like, she knows how to get out of the stadium, so to speak, but how far can she get? Like bless her, she's very powerful, but not very strong, not very fast. So we'll see what happens with that. But unfortunately, because of that annoying acid boy, they found out that she's gone a lot sooner than I think they planned. Obviously though, with the thing with Sergeant Tack and the scientist was different because they didn't do anything. They thought the girl was still in there. They have the spider girl. So I don't think that Sung Wan is aware of the fact that spider girl is missing at this point. He just knows his daughter's gone. And that's all he cares about, obviously. So a few mil uh, concurrent plots going on there. But anyhow, um, Acid Boy getting beaten up even more made me happy. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Everyone hates that kid. It's great. Anyway, <clears throat> so that's the situation there. And now Sang Wan has said he's gonna go look for his daughter himself because he's like, I can't trust any of y'all. You're useless. And so probably best though, because he's not in the best shape physically right now. So he's probably the best person to try to chase her versus one of the monster humans that are still in good shape. I mean, acid hands, his hands are still gone. So he, but he still, as we can see, can he can still produce acid and throw it. So that's why I'm scared. Although that's exactly why the, why Sang Wan's like, you can't go after her because if you try to touch her and you burn her, you're gonna ruin the body that I need. So yeah, in two ways. Although he doesn't aware of the fact that she can heal herself like the way she does. He has no idea. I wonder if there's gonna be a trigger that's gonna push her to adulthood. I just remind, I just, sorry, it just hit me again that every time she's gotta do a full body heal, she grows. So I wonder if she's gonna be an adult before the end of the season. Anyway, just a little random thought, <clears throat> but digressing. Um, and that's the other thing I'm wondering, cause Sang Won wants her body because obviously she's young and she's healthy and I think he wants her ability, but will he still be able to keep his ability of the tentacle thing? Like, I don't know that the, the abilities mount, cause again, he's never possessed the body of a monster before. He's only done humans. So 
I do wonder if he thinks he's gonna stack the powers because it might be a, a situation where if he takes over her body, then he won't be able to do the tentacle thing anymore. And he'll just have like her abilities, which is gonna make him super vulnerable. But he would just, knowing him, he would just turn people left, right, and center and create a monster army. So it wouldn't be super easy. Anyway, I don't think he's thought this through is my point. Digressing. So that's kind of the situation at the stadium, outside of the stadium. We see that Unyuk and, well, Unyuk and Unyu have met again. We'll talk about that first because it's very quick. Unyu, you know, her quest of two seasons has finally come to a close and that she found her brother and kind of like all this hope she's been holding on to has come to fruition, but it's not the way she thought it would be. She thought it'd be some teary reunion. Apparently she forgot about the fact that A, Unyuk has always been a bastard and two, they were never that close, right? And I get it. Like she definitely has had a lot to go. She's been through a lot. There's been a lot going on for her. So I do think she's a little bit less of the cold hearted brat she was towards him in season one, but he is still very much the same. And he expressed that the reason he is like this is because every time he goes through the cocoon phase, apparently he becomes less and less a uh, human intense in, in terms of his emotions. So he's like, my memories are intact. I still think like a human, but I have no emotions. So he's saying to her, I didn't come look for you because I don't have an emo emotional attachment to you anymore. But that is a lie because he's keeping the photo, right? I would believe that except that he kept the photo when he went back to his old body. He went specifically back for the photo, which clearly he's been carrying for at least a couple of iterations. So I don't think the emotional attachment is completely gone. I think he is just trying to detach himself from her. And I think that's because he realizes that they are not the same at the moment. Like she is, she's still human, he's not. And his life is very dangerous at the moment with dealing with all these monsters. So I think he's again, trying to protect her like he did back at the apartment. He sent her away when he knew he was turning. Now he's again, he's trying to sever that emotional relationship so that she'll stay away from him and he can do what he needs to do. Do I think that he is a bit detached more than he was before? I do. I do think that that is still somewhat in place. But as I said, it's obviously a full lie about him having no emotional attachment to her because otherwise he'd have no reason for the photo, right? So anyway, we see that that whole thing was pretty sad, but you know, I mean, I somewhat feel for Unyu because obviously Obviously, I know for her quest, this was very disappointing. This is not the ending she envisioned, but I'm not mad that several people told her about herself in this episode because it's been coming. She is selfish. She is a brat. She was never that loving or endearing. Sergeant Tack giving her a smack. I'm sorry, she kind of deserves that shit. Not to be smacked by a man, let me clarify. But in the sense of like, get it together. You keep putting yourself into dangerous situations over and over again, and you endanger people around you by doing them. And we need you to stop that. <laughs> stop that. Okay, your brother, if he survived a whole apartment building collapsing on him, he'll be fine. He does not need you. There's nothing you can do to save him. You are just causing problems. Again, all I want for Unyu is just to recognize that she's immortal. Just once, just recognize she is a mortal being that can die. And what good is, is that what her plan is? To try to save her brother and Unyu, and um, sorry, Hyunsu by dying? Like, I just need her to have a different note, right? And that's not really on her, that's the writers. I don't know why they can't have this girl evolve after three seasons, but I just need her to step back and breathe a little bit. But as I said, I wasn't mad about like Un Unyuk reminding her, it's like, you were never the greatest sister, honestly. <laughs> um, you were cold to me, you never liked me. And, um, you know, basically you kept telling me you wanted me to go away. You're the one who reminded me we're not actually, we're not actually blood siblings. So why, why should I be rushing through space and time to, to get back to you? Right? Like she is very self-centered. She very much is. Everything is kind of more about what she wants versus what might be better for the person she claims to care about. So just saying she needed to hear it. I hope it goes to heart. Probably won't. But anyway, she said she's not giving up on either of them just yet because again, that's her. She's what she wants. That's her mission. She really has nothing outside of that. Let's be real. So that was kind of their conversation. But before their conversation happened, we see that Unyuk and Hyunsu finally face off again after, you know, the last time they met, which was of course in the tower. And we see that, you know, basically Unyuk is prodding him. Like he realizes, rec he recognized right away, it's not the real Chan suits, the monster. And he's basically like, look, I need you because it looks like I was right about saying that Onyuk does not have, it looks like any extra abilities. Like he can't fight. He doesn't have tentacles or teeth or any sort of like side effect monster. Really his superpower at the moment is that he can keep coming back. That's it. So, which I mean, I shouldn't say that's it. That's pretty helpful. But 
that's basically it. So he needs a fighter, which is Hyun Soo, right? Hyun Soo actually has weapon, a weapon that's able to go up against the other Neo humans that do not like Neo humans like Unyuk. So he basically is like, hey, nice to see you again, Hyun Soo. Right back to the way we were back in season one, I'm gonna use you. <laughs> I don't really care whether you want to or not. I need you for something that I think is for the greater good. So I'm gonna use you. And so they have their little fight, but the only reason I, I, was, I was annoyed and I am annoyed that Unyuk is just like, again, much like his sister talking down to Hyun Soo like he's just a little dog. I don't like that dynamic, but that aside, I'm the reason Reason I'm not too mad is that there is something that's been glaringly obvious with Hyun Soo since season one, and that he's not in control of his monster abilities. Even the monster side of him is not in control of his monster abilities. He's got this crazy ass wing, only one, which I feel like, bro, you should be able to do both hands at this point. But anyway, he's got this crazy ass wing, which is clearly can do damage, but it's like all he knows how to do is just whip it around, you know? <laughs> he can whip it around. Yes, he can make the, the talons extend a little bit and, and come back, but for the most part, he's got one move with that sucker. And as he learned, or as Unya taught him inside of that little close quarters bus, he's like, yeah, that wing is great, but you know how long, by the time it takes you to swing that sucker around in here, this tiny little place, I'm fast. I could jump around you six times while you're just trying to get that thing off the ground. Like, he's like, does that make sense to you to be using this big ass wing in these tiny close quarters, <laughs> right? So again, for most of the other monsters that are out there, they're not, you know, mentally coordinated enough to fight. But if he's going up against the Neo humans who still have their brains intact, you know, this is reason why that someone's been able to defeat him thus far is because he only has one trick, right? Hyunsu has one trick and Sangwon knows what that trick is. So as long as he can dodge them blades, dodge them wings, he's fine. So I like that Eunyuk is at least trying to be like, bro, you are capable of so much more. You need to lean into your monster. If you're gonna be the monster, right? Cause right now monster Hyunsu is who's in control. He's like, bro, you got a smart mouth, but that's it. You got a smart mouth and one move. I need you to do more, right? So anyway, that's the only reason I wasn't so mad about that whole fight with him and Eunyu, sorry, and Eunyuk. Technically, Hyunsu should have wiped the floor with him, but he doesn't know what to do other than swing that arm. And that's why he said like, bro, are you useless without that arm? Like, can you do anything if that arm isn't here? So yeah, I need Hyunsu to figure that out. I said this last year and I'll say it again, hyunsu has got to realize that he has to embrace the monster to some degree because it's a part of him at the moment because that's the only way he's going to be able to defeat Sangwon. It's the only way, especially if Sangwon manages to take over his daughter's body and my theory is wrong and he actually is able to also do the tentacle thing at the same time, right? That's going to be, imagine if the tentacles can turn people. <gasps> oh, terrifying. Anyway, so that happened and we see that um, Hyun Soo was trapped inside the bus for a while, but he just needed some time. He figured it out and now we found out. I mean, we've already seen though, back in season one that his wings can put out like, there's a black ichor that they put out that's acidic, but we also know it kind of has a burning capability. They only touched on it back in season one, but he clearly figured out that he can heat up the wings and he caused an explosion. So I think that's the biggest he's ever used it on purpose. And again, that was the whole point was that Unyuk was like, see, like there's more you can do. You need to learn to level up, bro. So yeah, we ended the episode with Hyunsu breaking out of the bus and hopefully understanding now that he can do more with his abilities and we'll have to see what happens and how he goes from this point. Like they need to get to the stadium and they need to do it quick. But speaking of the stadium, outside the stadium, we see the Tak and the other soldier and the, the crazy girl are there, but they realize right away that things are not right. So Tak's like, I don't think we can go in. We need to know what's going on first. Otherwise we're just gonna end up putting ourselves in a bad position, particularly Kim, sorry, not Tak, Kim, because he's supposed to be dead. <laughs> so we know that if they see him, they're gonna kill him on sight. So anyway, uh, we saw that a camera filmed them though. So I'm wondering if someone does know they're already there, but we're gonna have to figure that out later. But yeah, that's kind of the state of where things are right now. We have the Isu is at large, as well as the little boy. Hyunsu is out of the bus, but he's now with Unyuk and Unsu and no, Unyuk and Unyu and they have to get back to the stadium at some point somehow. And that's pretty much it, right? Yeah, and then we have inside of the stadium, people are trying to escape. They're trying to see if they can create a distraction to get the people out of the stadium so that they can't be turned by whatever this ritual is that Sangwon is planning. So lots of moving parts still in this episode. I do feel like I said, we could have moved a few more things forward, but we do still have some pieces in place here. Again, we know this is all leading up to a big face-off once Hyunsu finally arrives. I am very curious to see what Onyuk is planning. And there's 
still the cocoon in the basement too. Let's not forget that, whether or not that person's gonna come out and be helpful. He might actually already be down there. Now that I think about it, because remember the lady who ran the place, she, she welded herself in. So maybe she's down there just chatting with her son right now, trying to make him come back to being who he was before. Hmm. Questions, questions. But anyways, that was a decent episode. I enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoyed watching along with me. If you did, please show some love and I will see you in the next one.